Uh, so, uh, well, I'm Nikhil Kothari. I'm the CTO at uh, My Asset Buddy. We basically make tools to manage data that goes into ERP systems, right? So you have your asset maintenance plan data or uh, your asset register, materials cataloging data, uh, right? We help oil and gas companies usually. Uh, we build, we are, we're currently building a product known as My Asset Buddy that will allow data engineers to actually, you know, populate that data and then run quality checks on that. Uh, because an ERP system is only as good as, you know, any data that's fed into it, right? I mean, the ERP system controls the process, but uh, the data, if the data is bad, then the process doesn't really matter. Um, so, my experience with Frappe, uh, I started about a year and a half ago, uh, right? Uh, we were building a project management system for uh, the Asian Disaster Preparedness Center uh, under a World Bank project. Right, and uh, we chose Frappe because uh, we were using Firebase for another startup that I was working on. Uh, and the thing is, Firebase is cool, right? But there's a lot of work that's uh, done to, you know, create a backend. I mean, you'll have to create an admin interface, and you'll also have to create the front-end product. So two separate product lines, too much work. We saw Frappe. We were like, okay, yeah, this solves most of our problems. Uh, so Frappe, what I like to see is, you know, it's, it's the perfect no-code tool out there, right? I mean, it's all developer-centric, but actually it's no-code, most of it. Uh, I mean, it carries database migrations without you ever writing code. Uh, so, you know, it's great for backends. Like, you, do, you never have to build a separate admin interface. And uh, the main thing, you know, it's, you know, if you're building a product, right, the product that actually goes to the client is what you're excited about. The admin interface you're not really excited about, but it's just, uh, you know, boring work that some developer has to do, right? So with Frappe, you don't have to do that. Um, and it's got capabilities like real-time listeners, revisioning system. I mean, there's, there's just so much to cover. But uh, the thing is, it's all available as soon as you install it, right? But where can we improve the most? My experience was that we can actually improve the most on the front-end developer experience. If you look at the current tech stack for Frappe, it's jQuery and Bootstrap, uh, right? Uh, this is as of version 13. I'm not sure about version 14, right? You can add more tools and libraries. I think some pages are built using Vue.js, right? But they need to be configured separately. Uh, and, you know, the tooling is not modern right now. Right? Now, don't get me wrong, you can build great looking UI with this. I've tinkered with it myself, right? So we created this UI for a project dashboard and every developer's favorite, the dark mode, right? So we've done that using Bootstrap jQuery on the desk interface itself, but it took a, took a lot of time. And, you know, as a modern developer, right, I'm spoiled for choice, right? These days we have React and Vue. It's much easier to build uh, you know, user interfaces with those front-end tools. And this is where, you know, uh, the adoption of Frappe Framework comes in, right? Because the developer experience, that, that also includes the documentation, but also, you know, when you're coding, the developer experience is what actually matters to, you know, the decision makers. And as Roshab said, you know, the developers are the decision makers in any organization. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, this is actually shared by a lot of companies. Vercel is one of those companies that does a lot of open source, but also has the cloud service provider, which, I mean, I believe that Frappe is also following that path, you know, Vercel and Superbase, right? So, I wanted to use React. Uh, I didn't know how to uh, with Frappe. Uh, one way was to host the React app somewhere, connected with an API, right? Uh, but then I saw this tweet from Frappe Cloud. Thank you very much, whoever tweeted this. Uh, we, we got the tech stack. We saw that they're using Vue. Uh, and obviously, if you're using Vue, you can use React. So I created a JavaScript library, right? Now, the points to consider for a great developer experience, first thing, you need TypeScript, right? Because if the, if the developer, you know, if your Visual Studio Code or whatever, you know, ID you're using, if it can actually suggest what to write, Right? That's much better. So it needed to support TypeScript. It needed to have JS docs everywhere. So every function that you're calling, it needs to be documented right in your code editor rather than you going to, you know, the documentation site. Right? It needed to support, you know, first of all, no customized APIs. Just use whatever is available with Frappe. Right? It needs to have authentication, database operations, remote API calls, file uploads, and 
Optionally, support for real-time event listeners, which is like super crazy if you invent it, like if you implement it very, you know, uh, correctly. So yeah, you can download uh, Frappe.js SDK, right? Now this is, uh, you know, hosted on NPM. Uh, it's built using TypeScript and Axios, so all the f uh, API calls are using Axios. Uh, and it works with any framework. So this is framework agnostic. It will work with the framework that was just released by the time this talk started, right? So uh, that's the state of the JavaScript universe. Um, now, how would you use it? You just initialize and you say, you know, if you're hosting on Frappe Cloud, which you should, uh, you know, you, you just mention your Frappe backend URL. And if your front-end app is on the same server as your Frappe backend, you don't even need to mention this can be an empty string. But that's how you initialize the Frappe app. And then let's say if you wanted to use the auth module, you just initialize auth and uh, you just you know, send it to login with username and password and it will handle the API calls and everything. So everything is type checked, right? Uh, it's actually modeled a lot on the Firebase library because I had experience with Firebase. Uh, so you'll see that, you know, in fact, even the function names and all, they're sort of uh, <laughs> copied from Firebase. Uh, so authentication, let's say you wanted to read a document, just db.getdoc, so this is all in your front-end code, right? Uh, similarly, if you wanted to, let's say, fetch a list of documents, right, you could have all these filters, all of these are optional, by the way, right? And the thing is, all of these are, again, type-checked. So if you have GitHub Copilot installed, it will eventually figure out what to write. So <laughs> just to be, uh, you know, just a heads up, because that's what happens with us. Uh, anyway, so yeah, if you wanted to get the list of documents, you know, uh, you can just uh, use this function. Similarly, if you wanted to create a document, right, uh, again, pretty standard, uh, all promise-based, yeah, and if you wanted to use TypeScript, so for, let's say if you, re, if you were reading a document or if you were updating a document and you were using TypeScript, you can just pass in the type, right? And we have coded it with generics. So the way it would work is that it would actually check whether you're passing in the correct document type or not, or the fields are correct or not. And if you're fetching data, right, it will already, you know, append the fields like name, owner, creation, modified, all of those fields will be appended in your response. Uh, so yeah. TypeScript support, so every document that you fetch uh, will be, you know, wrapped with the Frappe doc type. Uh, and, yeah. And it also supports remote API calls, and it supports file uploads with a progress callback. So if you wanted to show, like, a loader, a progress loader, you could do that. But then what about React? So we created another library, obviously. Uh, so for, again, for React, we wanted to, you know, have TypeScript again, right? We wanted hooks. So we really wanted to use hooks so that in one line of code, you're fetching a document, you're maintaining cache, you're maintaining loading states and error states, right? And so again, you can install it. It's also open sourced. Uh, yeah, under the hood, it's using Frappe.js SDK. So if you wanted to, for example, if you wanted to build something for Angular or Vue, you can use Frappe.js SDK and just wrap it around, right? So anyway, you've got TypeScript, and we're using SWR. So SWR is a caching strategy known as tail while revalidate. What happens is that on the initial load, uh, it will load the data, but then it will persist that data in the, sta in the cache, right? So your application will feel extremely fast. If you want to override those options, those caching options, you can do that. Uh, so how do you initialize? You initialize by wrapping your entire React app by a Frappe provider. That's it. And then, for example, if you wanted to fetch a document, it, it, this line of code is handling your loading state, error state, as well as the success state. So just one line of code in your component and you've fetched a document. And it's, again, type safe. Uh, there are other features, right? I'll actually go a little in depth into the you know, uh, examples. But there are authentication hooks, there are remote API calls, there are file upload hooks with, again, loading state management. Uh, there's a hook to actually search documents because there is a search function in Frappe and we added debouncing to it. And then there is a socket IOB. So this is, a, this is on beta, right? But for real-time listeners, we're using real-time listeners to get like, uh, you know, document changes. So it's, it behaves very much like Firebase. So how did we use React and Frappe? So this was one of the first interfaces that we created, right? Uh, so this is a completely new web app. Uh, 
And the thing is that if you click that button, it opens up this draw, right? So this is very easy to do in React because it's just a state management and a callback, right? So you call the function, you change the state, and it opens up. Uh, you'll see that comment button, right? So in Frappy, you already have a very good commenting system. Uh, but we wanted it to look like a chat and to look like a real-time chat. So what we did was when you click that comment button, it opens up a chat like this, right? And uh, how are we fetching the comments? Uh, well, we're just specifying the filters that I want to listen to the comments for this doc type, for this document, right? What are the fields that I want? The order, you know, creation ascending because I want the old, uh, you know, oldest to newest. And then finally, just one line to uh, handle the loading error and uh, success states. So use Frappe get doc list. I want to fetch comment, and that's it. So this handles your loading, right? And then you, you fetch the comments. But then you want real time, right? So if someone, let's say, enters in a message, you want uh, the UI to update in real time without having to you know, press a refresh button or something. So then we just added one more line. So use Frappe event listener, whatever event you want to listen to, and just mutate the document, right? So mutate means just fetch it again, and that's it. So like pretty much, uh, you know, this is all that's required. And in fact, this looks verbose because I couldn't fit it over there, but this is actually just two lines of code, uh, if you think about it, because the first three are, you know, just a part of that. Uh, so now, one of the things that you'll see in a lot of modern tools, it's the new shtick of the, you know, uh, of the you know, developer universe, is this command K palette, right? It opens up, and then you can do a lot of commands, or you can search stuff. Now, how do you implement search in React with Frappe? Uh, again, one line of code, right? So you have use search, whatever doc type you want to search for, and the text. And it will actually cover everything. So uh, on, if, you're, if you're configuring a doc type, you can actually configure search fields, and you can configure the title field. So all of that is actually fetched uh, with this just one line of code. And it actually handles debouncing. So it handles like 200 milliseconds. It will wait for the user to you know, change the input. If not, then it will uh, fetch. Main reason being that it will reduce the load on your server. right? You don't want a lot of requests on your server. Uh, and then you can also build for complex use cases. So this is what we're doing currently with uh, my asset buddy, right? So you've got, you know, PDF on one side, and you've got, you know, data attributes on the other side, and you want like ISO compliance, for example. You know, where was, you know, the process unit code was fetched from which page of which document? So that could be actually tied into. But the main point over here is that I can actually now focus on the product, not on the admin interface. Right? If someone's configuring a project and all that, right, the admin is doing that, I don't really need to do anything. I just created a doc type and that's done. That's pretty much it. So I can actually focus on the thing that my users will actually use. Um, and so, you know, what are the use cases for the two libraries, right? One is you could actually deploy your web app to a CDN or on the edge, as we say, right? Uh, so that would allow for high availability, right? Um, you could build a cross-platform mobile app. Uh, so let's say if you were using Capacitor and Ionic, you can actually build an Android and iOS app. So this is what I did for one of the startups that I co-founded earlier. Uh, and you can use modern front-end tooling, right? Uh, Chakra UI or Tailwind CSS. Uh, so you can actually style uh, you know, with ease. Bootstrap is pretty limited. And uh, now, where would you serve your React web app? Now you can, again, as I said, you can host it on Firebase or Vercel or any of the other cloud providers, or you can host it on the same server as your Frappe backend, right? So let's say if you were on Frappe Cloud, right, uh, it can just line your uh, Frappe uh, app directory, and that's it. So do, the best way to do that is to use Wheat and any framework of your choice, right? So Dopio is an app uh, that's written by uh, Hussein Nagaria. Right, so it's, it's incredibly simple to use. All you have to do is just install the app and create a single page application, and you'll be prompted to choose whether you know, you're using React or Vue, and it will set up uh, the rerouting and all the hooks, et cetera, redirects. It will set up all of that for you. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you if you have any questions.